After climbing down through the circles of hell, then ascending the mountain of purgatory, Dante the pilgrim stands alone at the summit, which is the Garden of Eden. Virgil, his guide until then, has left. Beatrice, a young woman whom he once loved, appears to take him to paradise. She shames him by saying that after her early death he quickly forgot her. He confesses his guilt. Then Beatrice lifts her veil. No longer stern and forbidding, she is smiling. He is transformed. They fly off together through the stars, soaring through one heavenly sphere after another until reaching the final sphere encircling all the others. During their flight, Beatrice becomes more and more beautiful, but stops smiling. Dante wonders why. She answers that as they approach the eternal fountain, her smile would incinerate him with its divinity. He shuts his eyes. As soon as they are in the presence of Christ and the Virgin Mary, Beatrice tells Dante to look at her face, as he can now survive her smile. He feels as if the whole cosmos is smiling. The white rose of paradise, whose petals are the souls of the just, surrounds him like a vast Roman amphitheatre. Suddenly he realises Beatrice is gone. He looks up and sees her in the rose's distant third tier. She smiles at him one final time before turning away. Yet, far from being sad, Dante, pilgrim and poet, his fictional and real selves merging, is joyful. He finally understands love, himself and the universe, indeed all existence that ever was and ever will be, because of Beatrice's last smile. All this occurs at the end of Dante's early 14th century comedy. Jorge Luis Borges thought Beatrice's last smile the most moving image ever achieved in Western literature. For me, it encapsulates the history of the Middle Ages because it evokes the ebb and flow of holiness and humanity in the living of a life, whether on earth or in heaven or in hell or in purgatory, that shaped the medieval world. This book follows these fluctuations between the divine and the human through an interweaving of stories about men, women and children living and dying between the 3rd and the 15th centuries. It opens and closes with the martyrdom of two young women. A 22-year-old mother in Carthage in 203, Vibia Perpetua, and a 19-year-old girl in Rouen in 1431, Jeanne la Pucelle, or Jeanne d'Arc. Their deaths, while horrible and heart-rending, nevertheless shine with the density of life.